Hi YouTube, I've just got an idea which has just come to me literally from a few minutes ago from a uh, atheist who was, or an atheist who was writing a comment on one of my videos and it just inspired me with quite a good idea. I haven't thought it through yet but I'm pretty sure this is one of the best I've come up with completely 100% originally which I haven't thought of before. An idea that's just come to you in the last few minutes that you haven't thought through yet but that you think will overturn one of the most solid theories in science backed by over a century of overwhelming evidence. Well, what could possibly go wrong? I want you to go straight back to the very, very, very beginning with the primordial soup. Primordial soup? That we supposedly come from. And um, whatever it was, I think they say a bolt of lightning or some kind of electrical charge um, makes amino acids to come together and form, we'll say, the first cell. This one single cell is the only living organism on Earth. And this has come from the primordial soup from which everything else in the whole time is going to evolve from, according to evolution. Now, the problem is this. Wait, before you go on to tell us what the problem is, let me suggest to you what the problem is. The problem is you haven't bothered to find out what researchers have discovered about the origin of life on Earth or what they're postulating might have happened. You've made a few wild guesses, and now you intend to show that your best guess is simply not plausible. Well done. So here are the other problems. First, amino acids didn't come together to form the first cell. Life didn't even begin with the first cell. It probably began with a nucleic acid that could replicate itself. It could have taken millions of years before some of these nucleic acids evolved to the stage where they entered clumps of lipids. Better protected inside a lipid membrane, they had a higher chance of survival and passed on this affinity when they copied themselves. Of course, researchers may be wrong about all this, but if so, put up an argument against it. Show why they're wrong and show which stage of the chemistry is impossible. What you can't do is make up some nonsense about a bolt of lightning making the first cell in a primordial soup and then go on to show that this made-up nonsense is made-up nonsense. You know, nothing's easier to debunk than creationists who spend all their time and effort attacking theories and hypotheses that don't exist. And that's why a lot of them end up as nominees for the coveted golden crocoduck. So in this video I'm putting a few third-rate nominees together who have one thing in common with Perfacetus. They all base their arguments on a complete misunderstanding of what science says. Putting up an argument that's never been made and then tearing it to shreds is called a straw man. And of course if you build the straw man yourself and dress it up in all sorts of nonsense then it's very easy to tear apart. Evolution, it's the greatest lie, hands down ever hoisted upon mankind. The second law of thermodynamics contradicts the very premise of evolution. Ooh, tell us, what is this second law of thermodynamics of which you speak? The second law says that the whole universe is running down into complete disorder. Well, this wasn't the second law of thermodynamics as I was taught it, but maybe it's changed since I went to school. So I googled the atheist antidote's definition of the second law to find out where he'd got it from. No prizes for guessing, the definition comes from an article by a creationist, Henry Morris, on a creationist website. Let's read the relevant extract from Morris's article. The evolutionist, the evolutionist assumes that the, that the whole universe, universe has evolved, evolved upward, upward from a single, single primeval particle to, to human beings. Being. Shh, I'm trying to read. But the second so law, again, the one of the best proved laws of science, the says that... Wait a minute. tested laws in science... The Atheist Antidote, in your video, did you simply repeat what someone else wrote on a website? The evolutionist, he assumes that the whole universe has evolved upward from a single particle to the present state of human beings. But again, the second law of thermodynamics, one of the most solidly proven, best-tested laws in science, says the atheist has everything but backwards. Which wouldn't be the first time for y'all, would it? second law says that the whole universe is running down into complete disorder. Yes, apparently you did. You've embellished it with a few choice words of your own, but essentially your rant is just copied from Morris and passed off as your own work. Not only that, but in repeating what another creationist wrote without bothering to check it, you get the definition of the second law of thermodynamics completely wrong. Now, there really is no definitive version of the second law, so wording does vary. But no one, apart from creationists, has ever defined the second law as the whole universe running down into complete disorder. 
After all, we only need to look around us to see that that isn't the case. Plant a sunflower seed, and it grows into a flower that can turn to face the sun. When water evaporates and rises haphazardly into the atmosphere, it turns into exquisitely ordered snowflakes. Volcanic explosions, the very definition of chaos and disorder, can produce beautiful crystal geodes. So given that we can see this happening all around us all the time, who in their right minds would devise a law that says none of this is happening? And why in a hundred years of science hasn't anyone spotted that the law doesn't conform to reality? The answer is either that scientists are all stupid, or that the atheist antidote, copying straight from Henry Morris, got the definition wrong. In fact, reality complies very nicely with the second law of thermodynamics, which says there's a tendency towards disorder in a closed system. And evolution complies very nicely also, on two counts. First, there is a tendency towards disorder in the universe, because the brief period life exists on Earth before our planet is consumed by an expanding and dying sun won't affect that tendency towards disorder at all. Secondly, the Earth receives energy from the sun, so it isn't a closed system. What evolution that Charles Darwin was talking about, in fact, Charles Darwin very carefully avoided the word. He used the word transmutation of species in his book. Here's our third straw man. Now, I hope you all realize that the theory of evolution does not say dogs turn into cats and fish turn into birds. Okay. Now, transmutation of species means dogs turning into cats, fish turning into birds, cows turning into whales. And that doesn't happen. No, whether you call it transmutation of species or evolution, you don't get dogs turning into cats or fish turning into birds. No, cows don't turn into whales either. That would be like, I don't know, water turning into wine. What you do get is the evolution of animal species over thousands of generations. A fish won't turn into a bird any more than it'll give birth to a bird, but each new generation of a particular species will be slightly different to the previous generation. Look, you've got a few books there to make it look as though you know what you're talking about. Why doesn't at least one of them cover the basics of evolutionary theory? Life happened once. And when life happened once... There was a cell, mm. and from that cell, everything is descended. Yeah. That means that you are personally related to a banana. Yes, you could certainly say that. It means you're related to a cabbage. Also correct. It means you're related to a bacterium camel. So what? And a bacterium. What's your point? I mean, uh, 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 you don't need to be a rocket scientist. I may have studied this subject for years and years and years What's and years. What's your point? Um, but you don't, it, it, the actual things that knock down evolution as a theory are so simple. Then what are they? You see, one of the main rules of science has got a very complicated name. It's called the law of thermodynamics. Oh, OK, this is where we came in. So to summarize your main argument, if evolution is true, then we all evolved from simple bacteria, so all life on Earth is related, and this is not possible because of... Uh, 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 but, uh, and then the argument goes on, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, and the thing is, uh, 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 the law of thermodynamics. But before I wind up this year's nominees for the 2011 Golden Crocoduck, I just have one more to add. John Pendleton has been nominated a couple of times before, and someone nominated him again for this video. I didn't think anything of it until I came to this breathtaking breach of the Ninth Commandment, that left me just speechless. Now, Loch Ness is located in Scotland, England. Sorry, but as someone who's descended from both Anglo-Saxons and Scottish Highlanders, I find this appalling on, uh, on so many levels. I... Uh... That's right, Mike. I couldn't have said it better myself. Sadly, this particular breach of the Ninth Commandment isn't so much to further the creationist cause as the cause of geographical ignorance, so it doesn't qualify for a coveted golden crocoduck. But Perfacitus, The Atheist Antidote, and Mike's Story are all contenders.